Minister. Mr. Speaker, Alexander Lebedev is a well-known former KGB officer and also a former owner of the London Evening Standard newspaper. Yesterday, the Prime Minister told the Liaison Committee in response to questions from the Right Honourable Member for Kingston upon Hull, opposite uh, Hull North, that he had met Mr Lebedev on a very few occasions. I understand that the Prime Minister also confirmed where he had met, that, that he had met Mr Lebedev without officials present and that he had sub subsequently reported those meetings to officials as required. I do not have any information about the content of any discussions that may or may not have been held with Mr Lebedev. All government ministers are made fully aware of their responsibilities to safeguard national security sensitive information. It's been the long-standing policy of all governments of all colours not to comment on intelligence or national security sensitive matters, as to do so could jeopardise the very security which it is the first duty of government to protect. In response to the Salisbury attack, the UK expelled 23 Russian intelligence officers and significantly strengthened our defences against Russian interference in the United Kingdom. Vivek Cooper. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We've sought this UQ despite the meltdown in the government because it goes to the heart of our national security. Yes. Yesterday, the Prime Minister admitted to the Home Affairs and Public Accounts Committee chairs that in April 2018, as Foreign Secretary, he met with the former KGB officer Alexander Lebedev, father of Lord Lebedev, in Italy without any officials, yep. without any security. He went there straight from a NATO meeting where the top item on the agenda was Russia. At the height of the Salisbury poisoning crisis, after Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia had been attacked, and before Charlie Rowley and Dawn Sturgis had been exposed to the remaining Novichek. This was a chemical weapon attack by Russian agents on British soil that targeted two British residents, had life-changing effects for a British police officer, and killed a British citizen. Mm -hmm. On the 20th of May this year, Alexander Lebedev was sanctioned by the Canadian government, a Five Eyes partner of the UK, for being one of the 14 identified people who have directly enabled Vladimir Putin's senseless war in Ukraine and bear responsibility for the pain and suffering of the people of Ukraine. The UK has not yet sanctioned him. The charges against the Prime Minister are not just about lack of integrity, they are about complete disregard for basic national security exactly. and the patriotic interests of this country. Yes. And those charges lie not just with the Prime Minister, but with all of those who have enabled him and covered up for him on this issue. Yes. So, did the Foreign Office, the Home Office and the Security Service know about this meeting in advance? Was a detailed record made after the event uh, of the meeting? Because there are rumours that the Foreign Secretary was too drunk to properly remember. Is that true? Yeah. There are also rumours that Alexander Lebedev was trying to arrange a phone call from the meeting with the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. Is that true? Did that phone call happen? The record of Minister's interest says the Foreign Secretary accepted hospitality in Italy for himself and a guest, but he travelled home alone. Who was that guest and did that put him in a compromising position? Mm. The Prime Minister referred yesterday to several meetings with Alexander Lebedev without officials. When were the others? Were any of them while he was Prime Minister? And the Shadow Security Minister has been asking for confirmation that this meeting happened for months. So why have Home Office Ministers, Cabinet Office Ministers and Foreign Office Ministers all been covering up? It is bad enough covering up for parties and breaking the law, but covering up over national security is a total disgrace. It puts all our safety and security at risk. It's not just the Prime Minister, it is the whole government that is letting the country down. Yeah. Staff. I'm not expecting to take everybody. It's going to be short with a lot of other business. Um, Mr Speaker, I take issues of our national security extremely seriously, which is why I'm at this bench today. Day after day, uh, ministers of this government, especially those in the Foreign Office Minister, to make decisions affecting the safety and security of UK citizens, in, in, in the case of the Foreign Office Ministers, especially UK citizens overseas. On the subject of sanctions, uh, the UK has, of course, introduced world-leading sanctions packages uh, since Russia's illegal invasion of 
Ukraine. That is over 12,000 individuals. I cannot comment on any further sanctions as we never comment on sanctions in advance. But I can confirm, Mr. Speaker, that since uh, May the, uh, February the 24th and today, I, like other Foreign Office Ministers, have carried out my duties in signing off a number of those sanctions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the last 48 hours of this hapless government have been quite disgusting to any decent person who's been submitting to the spectacle of it. And the last few years haven't been much cop either. Somebody who is deeply inappropriate for public office, not least the highest office, aided and abetted and enabled by venality and cowardice by people who are now falling over themselves to compete for sanctimony and hypocrisy. His toxic legacy will live after him. Now, we don't celebrate on these benches the departure of the Prime Minister. Like getting rid of a headache, we're just glad it's going. But his toxic legacy will live after him, and we'll all need to deal with the consequences of this disastrous administration. His toxic legacy on inflicting his disastrous Brexit on us all, uh, asleep at the wheel over climate change and allowing a cost of living crisis to accumulate, which our, all of our citizens are dealing with, inaction on climate change, breaking international law over Northern Ireland, we will, all of this be deal we will all of us be dealing with this thereafter. And this revelation, and I'm glad to hear the Minister takes national security seriously, and I don't doubt order, it. Order, order. First of all, it's meant to be relevant to actually what we're debating. I've had nothing yet, and you've just lost your full, you've used your full minute. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to actually put a question. Forgive me, Mr Speaker, I'm, I'm taking this stuff really seriously, and I am disgusted. The rest of us are. I'm trying to chime with the mood of the House rather than the government. The Minister takes national security seriously, but it's quite obvious from the Prime Minister's admission yesterday that he has serious questions to answer about it. So I appreciate the Minister is perhaps not in a position to make a proper answer, but will she at least allow the prospect of a police investigation into the Prime Minister and his influence over the influence that Russian individuals have over him because his toxic legacy over national security cannot be something he can evade responsibility for? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um. I, I would say that, um, and in our follow-up as well to the answer from the Honourable Lady opposite, uh, the Prime Minister did commit yesterday that he f would follow up with the Honourable Member's um, question at the Liaison Committee. He did commit to that. I have asked about whether or not there is um, more detailed information about the discussions, but I do not have any information about the content of those discussions at this time. Thank you. Chris Brown. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think the Minister inadvertently misled us earlier because the Prime Minister yesterday, I was at the Liaison Committee, did not say what she said. Uh, he did not say, uh, to the best of my memory anyway, that he had notified other officials. If he had notified other officials, surely, as the Minister would understand, that meeting would have appeared on the list of on the transparency records of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office for April 2018, and it is not there. So either um, she has misled us inadvertently today, or the Prime Minister in, um, did so perhaps more deliberately previously. Mr Speaker, I was obviously not at the Liaison Committee yesterday. I was, as you may know, giving the ministerial statement in order to fast-track the ratification of Finland and Sweden to joining NATO, another measure that is absolutely crucial to the safety and security here, and then later on in the chamber ensuring that we pass the funding. In terms of the question, therefore, I can repeat again what I said in my opening words. It is my understanding that the Prime Minister confirmed that uh, where he had met that, that he had met Mr. Lebedev without officials present, and that he subsequently reported those meetings to officials. That is my understanding, uh, and that is what I have been told. If that is not accurate reflection, then I do apologise. But this is not me misleading. That was what I. Um, was told. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. According to intelligence reports that I have seen, a serving sorry, according to intelligence reports I have seen, a serving FSB officer reported in 2017, and I quote, Alexander Lebedev is considered by the FSB to be an important asset. More recently, he has significantly expanded his businesses in occupied Crimea 
pleaded with the Kremlin for economic help for economic uh, for Occupy Crimea, and was revealed as the indirect owner of a company called Energomash, which supplies the, nuclear, the Russian nuclear program. How is it possible for the Prime Minister to stay in office if he is conspiring with an agent of the Russian state? Um, thank you very much. As the member opposite knows, I cannot comment about any potential future sanctions that may be introduced because we never do that in advance. So I cannot give any more comment on the particular individual that is discussing. In terms of following up, uh, because I know that the honourable previous member asked me to be more clear about what the Prime Minister said at the Liaison Committee, I have just been passed a note uh, that apparently the Prime Minister says that he thinks he mentioned this meeting to officials. That is, a, that is I'm reporting what I have been told. Thank you. To say to the Minister, it's deeply unsatisfactory uh, that she comes to the House so ill-prepared because this matter has been doggedly uh, pursued by the yes. Honourable Member for yes. Halifax yes. for many, many months. Yes. Can I just say to the, to the Minister, does she agree with me that in light of the admissions that were made at the Liaison Committee yesterday, it would be wholly inappropriate for the Prime Minister, if he is about to resign, to try and stay uh, as a caretaker Prime Minister, yeah. in light of these very serious allegations yeah. 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 that uh, reflect on his ability to keep this country safe. Yeah. 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 Mr Speaker, um, the Prime Minister is expected to make a statement shortly to the people of this country, and I obviously cannot comment on that in advance. I do hear what she says. 